Assalamu alaikum and good day everyone. So today we are going to begin our lectures for this semester. So we are begin with the topic 1 which is a partial differentiation. So for this topic we will have four subtopics. The first one is the first order partial derivative and second order partial derivative and then the application which is the extremum of function of two variables and Lagrange multiplier. Okay so for the first lecture we are going to uh, discuss the, the first two subtopics which is the first order and the second order partial derivative. Okay, so the learning outcome for this lecture is to compute the first order partial derivative involving two variables x and y and then also to compute the second order partial derivative. So at the end of this lesson, you guys should make, should make sure that you guys understand how to compute the first and second order partial differentiation. Okay. What is the definition? So, the process of differentiating a function of several variables with respect to one of its variables while keeping the other variable fixed is called partial differentiation and the resultant derivative is a partial derivative of the function. Means that if we have two or three or four variables and we want to differentiate with respect to only one of the variables, other than that will be a constant. Fixed means the constant. So, we can assume it as a constant. So, for a function with two variables, let's say z equal to f of x and y. So, we have two variables here, x and y. The partial derivative of f with respect to x is denoted by f sub x. Okay? Or, partial derivative of f with respect to x is obtained by differentiating f respect to x and treating y as a constant. y is other variables in the function. Whereas the partial derivative of f respect to y denoted by f sub y or partial derivative of f sub y is obtained by differentiating f with respect to y and treating x as a constant. Okay, so now for this one, we are trying to find the partial derivative respect to y. We can write, denote it as f sub y or partial derivative of f respect to y. And it's obtained by differentiating f respect to y and x will be the constant here. Okay, so earlier we have y as a constant because we are differentiating respect to x. This one, we have x as a constant when we differentiate with respect to y. So, first order partial derivative, the notation we use for the first order partial derivative of f with respect to x depends on what aspect of the derivative we want to emphasize. Okay, so here we have, if we have a point of x0, y0, means that if the partial derivative of f with respect to x at x0, y0, so we are substituting the value of x and x0 and y0 into the results. The same as f sub x of x0, y0. Okay, for this one, we have the function in terms of z, z. We representing the function in z with respect to x at x0, y0, and so on. Okay, so it can be f of z, and all are respect to x. Because we have sub x or differentiate respect to x. Okay. The rule of differentiation, this is what we have done or we have learned in semester 1. So, I don't have to teach you again because you have learned it in your semester 1. So, you have to remember all of this. We won't give you in the examination. Okay, so please remember and use it well in this topic. Okay, because we won't teach you again for this part. Uh, that's why all of the lecturers has said chapter 8 is really important for you guys chapter 8 semester 1 the big chapter and also important okay so you just have to apply all of these rules up we have the uh, the basic rule here and then we have the product rule caution rule and then the power rule and then how to differentiate the exponent and how to differentiate log so you have to uh, look back at your notes Okay, so let's start with the first example. So example, if f of x y equal to x cubed y plus x squared y squared, find f sub x. So what is f sub x? So we want to partial differentiate respect to x. 
So, if we want to differentiate respect to x, means that we have to assume that the y will be the constant. Lah. Okay, so, treating y's as constant, all y's as a constant. So, the first, the first term here, this y will be a constant. It's like 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Lah. So, we just have to differentiate the x cube. So, how to differentiate x cube? Yes, we bring the power to the front, use the rule of differentiation. So, it will be 3x, 3 minus 1 will be square. Okay, so 3x square and then multiply by the constant y. Okay, because y is a constant. We're treating y as a constant. And then, for the second term here, we have to treat y squared as a constant. Lah. So, just have to differentiate x squared. So, differentiate x squared, we get 2x. So, we have 2x y squared. Okay, so that's for f sub x. How about f sub y? So, f sub y, we have to assume that x is a constant. Okay, so now we have a constant of the x cube at the first term. So, we just have to differentiate y. So, differentiate y, we get, we differentiate y respect to y, we get 1. Okay, so just copy back the constant x cube multiplied by 1. And then, plus with, so this x square here is a constant. So, we just have to differentiate y square. So, write down the constant x square and then differentiate y square, we get 2y. So, it's multiplied by 2y. So, simplify, write down correctly, it will be x cubed plus 2x square y. Okay, so that's for f sub 1. So, example 2, f if f of sub, f of x y equal to x y plus ln x natural log x so find the partial derivative of f respect to x and partial derivative of f respect to y so the left side we want to find respect to x so we assume y as a constant so we differentiate x differentiate x we get 1 so the answer is y multiplied by 1 okay and then plus Differential respect to x. So, ln x, we don't have any y, right? So, we don't have constant in front of it. Just x, ln x, 1 constant. So, differentiate ln x, we get 1 over x. So, the answer is y plus 1 over x. How about differentiate partial derivative of f respect to y? So, we are assuming x as a 0. Okay? So, look at here x is the 0. So, just have to differentiate y. We copy back the x, bring down the x, and then multiply by differentiate of y equal to 1. And then, plus we differentiate ln x. Ln x also is a constant. Ln of a constant is a constant. So, how you differentiate constant? We don't have any y here. It will be 0. So, the answer is only x. Okay? So, please make sure that you are different treating correctly. Okay, so example 3. If z equal to y, multiply by e power of x over 1. Now, find z sub x and z sub y. Partial derivative of z respect to x and y. So, it's multiplication between two terms, right? But, if you want to find z sub x, this y is not a terms. It's just only variable uh, it is just only constant because we are differentiating with respect to x so y will be a constant so what we need to constant is the e to the power of x y okay so just copy back the y you, what you need to do is to differentiate the e to the power of x y so how to differentiate exponent so we use the formula to differentiate exponent equal to e to the power of fx so copy back the equation e to the power of x over y and then differentiate the power. So differentiate x over y. Partial derivative of x over y respect to x. So how do differentiate? So differentiate x over y. This over y is just a constant. So you just have to differentiate x. So differentiate x will be 1. So 1 multiplied by y, 1 over y. Okay? So... It will be what? So, this y can be cancelled out. So, the answer is e to the power of x over y only. 
Okay, so that for z sub x. How about z sub y? So z sub y, because this y is a y, so we have to differentiate. But we also have exponents, so we have to apply the product rule. So this is multiplication between two terms. So our u is equal to y, our v is equal to e of xy. So applying the product rule, so it's v u prime plus u v prime. So our v is e to of x over y, and then v u, u prime, so you have to differentiate y with respect to y. Right, and then plus with u. What is our u? u is equal to y. And then multiply by v prime. So the derivative respect to y of the e to the power of x over y. Now, you need to solve the derivative part. So differentiate y here, we get what? We get 1. So e to the power of x over y multiplied by 1. And then for the second term here, y is y. And then partial derivative of e to the power of x over y. What we have here is actually the, yes, differentiation of an exponent. So, we copy back the exponent e to the power of x over y. And then, differentiate the x over y with respect to y. Okay, now to differentiate this one, what is at the denominator? So, this x is a, only a constant. So, a constant means that it's like x, we can take out the x partial derivative of 1 over y. So, how to differentiate 1 over y? So, we need to write down as y to power negative 1. Okay? So, the differentiate partial derivative of y to power of negative 1 is equal to, so we bring the power to the front, so it will be negative, and then y to power of negative 1 minus 1 will be negative 2. So, simplify everything. This negative y to the power of negative 2 is equal to negative 1 over y square. Right? So, simplify. We can cancel out the y here. So, the answer will be negative uh, e to the power of x over y minus x over y e to the power of x over y. So, we can write down this thing as x over y or so. Right? And then we can factorize out e to the power of x over y because it's a common factor. And then what's left is 1 minus x over y. Okay, so this is a bit complicated because we have to apply the product rule. And then instead of the product rule, so we need to apply the formula for the exponent. Okay. So the next example, example 4, we have a function of g in terms of x and y which is equal to x squared minus xy plus y squared all to the power of 5. Now, we want to find the partial derivative with respect to x and partial derivative with respect to y. So, how do we find it? Can we expand? No, because it's power of 5. So, we need to apply the, yes, the power rule. So, what is the partial derivative with respect to x of the power rule? We need to multiply with n in front of it, which is, our n is 5. So, bring 5 to the front and then copy back everything inside the bracket and the power will be minus 1. Okay, so 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. And now, the next part is to find the partial derivative of the function fx. Here is function fx. So, partial derivative with respect to x. So, what is the fx? fx here is x squared minus xy plus y squared. So, now we want to differentiate with respect to x, right? So, everything of 4 will be a constant. Okay, so differentiate x squared, we get... 2x and then differentiate xy minus xy here yes because y is a constant we just have to differentiate x which is equal to 1 so minus y and then differentiate y square we don't have any x so this is a constant so differentiate a constant will be 0 that's why it's 2x minus y only okay so this is our answer for the uh, partial derivative of g respect to x. How about y? It's the same step because it's power, right? So we have to apply power rule. So 5 of x squared minus xy plus y squared all to power 4. But then we have to differentiate partial, dif partial differentiation of the g with respect to partial fx here. Sorry, the fx inside the bracket here with respect to y. So it's x squared minus xy plus y squared. 
Okay, so the derivative here, we have x squared and x as a constant. So, we have to differentiate a constant, we will get 0. So, differentiate x squared with respect to y is 0. And then differentiate negative x and y. This x is a constant, so only differentiate y, we get 1. So, that's why it's negative x multiplied by 1 is negative x. And then differentiate y squared with respect to y, we get 2y. So, the answer here is negative x plus 2y. Okay, so this is our final answer for example 4. Okay, so example 5. Find f sub x and f sub y if f of x y equal to square root of x square plus y square. Okay, how to differentiate a square root? Okay, so the, actually this square root can be written as the power of 1 over 2. So the same as example 4, we can apply the general power rule. So for f sub x, bring the power to the front, 1 over 2 of x square plus y square, copy back everything inside the bracket, and then the power will be subtract by 1. So we have negative 1 over 2, and then the partial derivative of the fx inside the bracket. So partial derivative of x square plus y square respect to x. So we just have to differentiate the x square here, right? Because this y square will be a constant. So, differentiate constant is 0. So, differentiate x squared, we get 2x. That's why it's multiplied by 2x. So, these two can be cancelled out. So, we have x over x squared plus y squared power of 1 over 2 or square root of x squared y plus y squared. So, f sub y is equal to, so bring the power to the front, 1 over 2 of x squared plus y squared power of negative 1 over 2, the same as, and then, we need to differentiate everything inside the bracket with respect to y. So, this x squared will be a constant. So, differentiate y squared, we get 2y. So, this should be multiplied by 2y. So, simplify the 2. So, we get y over x squared plus y squared all to power of 1 over 2. Or, we can write down x squared root of x squared plus y squared. So, example 6. Find the values of partial derivative of f respect to x and respect to y at the point of 4 minus 5 if... So now, we have to find the partial derivative first and then we have to substitute the value of x and y. Okay, now, find the f sub x first. So differentiate partially. So for x squared, we can differentiate respect to x. We'll get 2x. And then for the 3x squared, so this 3xy, sorry, so 3 and y is a constant. So differentiate x, we get 1. So it will be plus 3y. And then differentiate y respect to x will be 0. Differentiate negative 1 respect to x so will, be, will be 0. So we have the f sub x. And then for f sub y, what do we get? What do we get? Okay, so directly we find at the point of 4, negative 5. So, you just have to substitute value x, which is equal to 4, and then y, which is equal to negative 5. So, we get the answer equal to negative 7. Okay, and then to find the f sub y. So, we just have to differentiate as usual. So, for x squared is a constant because it's differentiating with respect to y. So, it will be 0. And then for 3xy... We assume that x, 3x equal to constant, right? x is a constant, 3 also a constant. So, differentiate y, we get 1. So, it will be 3x. And then, differentiate y here plus y here, we get 1 plus 1. And then, differentiate negative 1, it will be 0 lah because it's a constant. Now, to find the value at the point 4, negative 5, we just have to replace the value of x here because we don't have y. So, substitute x equal to 4, which is equal to 12 plus 1, equal to 13. So, the answer is equal to 13. Okay? Now, example 7. If z equal to x square plus 4y square, show that x multiplied by partial derivative of z respect to x plus y multiplied by partial derivative respect to y equal to 2z. 
Okay, now what we need to do is to find the partial derivative with respect to x and respect to y. So for z sub x, we can differentiate respect to x. So the right side, the right, the second term will be constant. For y squared is a constant because we don't have any x. So differentiate x squared, we get 2x. And then partial derivative with respect to y, we get the x squared will be constant. So we just have to differentiate the 4y squared. So differentiate 4y squared, we get 8y. And then now we replace the left hand side first. So the left hand side is x, z sub x plus y, z sub y. So x multiplied by 2x plus multiply by 2x plus y multiply by 8y. Okay. So what do we get? We will get actually we have a common factor. What is the common factor? We have 2 here, we have 8. So the common factor is 2. So we can factorize 2 out and then the bracket will be x squared plus 4y squared. Which is this x squared 4y squared is actually our z, the original z. So it's equal to 2z. So it's equal to the the equation that we have to show. Okay, so it is indeed correct. Okay. So this is the conclusion. Eh? Okay, so let's continue with the second order partial derivatives. So now, it's the same as the second order of differentiation. For this one, we only have to apply the partial derivative. But, what we have is a bit different because we have more than one variables. Okay, so let's say if we take two consecutive partial derivatives with respect to the same variable. Okay, same variable. The resultant derivative is called second order partial derivative with respect to that variable. Okay, so the same variable. So let's say we should differentiate partial differentiate with respect to x for the second order also with respect to x. So... We have the same variable that. However, we can also take a second partial derivative with respect to a different variable. Okay? Let's say we differentiate first with respect to x and then we can do the second order with respect to y. It's produced what is called as mixed second order partial derivative. Okay, this function z equal to f of x and in and y has the following partial derivative. It can be Differentiate twice with respect to x, we get f sub x, x. Okay, so we have partial derivative square here and then for x square. So we differentiate the partial derivative of f with respect to x with respect to x again. So we have f sub x, x. And then differentiate twice with respect to y, the same as x. And then differentiate first with respect to x, then with respect to y. So the first derivative is respect to x and then we differentiate partial derivative again with respect to y. So what comes first? It's x come first. So that's what f sub x1. And then the last one is differentiate first with respect to y then with respect to x. Okay, so we are differentiate respect to x of the partial differentiation of f respect to y. Okay, so what comes first is respect to y and then we differentiate partial differentiate with respect to x. It's equal to f sub y x. Okay, so the third and the fourth cases are called as mixed partial derivative. But notice here that both will give the same answer. Okay, so f sub x y, will, it will be equal to f sub y x. Also note, the notation f sub x means that we differentiate first with respect to x, then with respect to y, while f sub y x means just the opposite. You can remember the order by observing that in both notations, you differentiate first with respect to the nearest variable of f. So let's do example 8. Okay, now, to answer the second order partial derivative, you have to get the correct answer for the first order partial derivative. So make sure you have the correct method to solve up. and then to solve the partial derivative, the first order partial derivative, you have to conquer the normal differentiation. Okay, so that's why it's important to conquer chapter 8 of semester 1. 
Okay, so z equal to f sub x, uh, z equal to f of function of, of variable x, y, which is equal to 5 x squared minus 2 x, y plus 3 y cube. Now we want to find this 4. You have to know what is this notation means. But we also can represent it as this one for a f sub x, x. For b is f sub y, y. For c is f sub x y x first and then y and then for d is f sub y x okay for question a we want to differentiate respect to x okay so find the d partial derivative of z respect to x first so differentiate respect to x means that the first and second term can be differentiate the third term is a y everything is in y and the constant so everything is a constant so this one will be 0. So differentiate 5x squared, we get 10x. Differentiate negative 2xy, we get negative 2y. So the last one will be 0. So this is partial derivative respect to x. And then we need to differentiate again respect to x. Right? So partial derivative of 10x minus 2y respect to x. So we have to differentiate the first term only because the second term is in term of 2 and y which is a constant. So differentiate 10x, we will get 10 only. So that is the answer for A. Easy, right? Okay, so let's continue with B. F sub y, y. So differentiate respect to y, we need to differentiate respect to y first. And then differentiate again. Now, for the first order, we get differentiate 5x squared is a constant no? so it will be 0 so we just continue with the second term so negative 2x is a constant so differentiate y we get 1 so negative 2x and then for the third term we can differentiate respect to y which is we get 9y squared so plus 9y squared and then we need to differentiate again respect to y of negative 2x plus 9y squared so for the first term, it's in term of x, so we, we cannot differentiate lah because it will be a constant. So differentiate 9y squared only, we get 80y. Okay, so that's for question B. For question C, we need to differentiate respect to x first and then barulah differentiate respect to y. So first order respect to x, we get uh, uh, the answer already in question A, right? Which is equal to 10x minus 2y. So just differentiate this answer respect to y. So we only can differentiate negative 2y because 10x is a constant. So differentiate negative 2y, we get negative 2. Okay, that's for question C. For question D, we need to differentiate respect to Y first. So we have this answer in part B. So the part B, we get negative 2X plus 9Y squared. Okay, so the second derivative, we need to differentiate respect to X. So the only thing we can differentiate is only negative 2X because 9Y squared is a constant. So differentiate negative 2x with respect to x, we get negative 2. So we can notice that the answer for question C and D is the same. It's negative 2 because uh, it it doesn't matter which one you partial differentiate first. It will be the, it will give you the same answer. Okay, so let's continue with the next question. Example nine. Okay, we have f sub x, x, f sub y, y, f sub x, y, f sub y, x of the function f of x, x, y, which is equal to e to the power of x squared minus 3 y cubed. So, this is an exponent function. Okay, so, so we start with the f sub x, the first order first. Okay, first order, f sub x, we can solve for f sub x, x and f sub x, y for the second order. Okay, f sub x, what do we get? We will get, this is exponential, right? So, we need to use the formula, the rule of differentiation of exponent, e to the power of fx. 
So what do we get? We will get e to the power of fx multiplied by f prime x. Okay, so what is f prime x? So we need to differentiate the f prime x here. Respect to f sub x will be respect to x lah. So we have to differentiate x squared only. Okay, so this part, the right side will be constant. So differentiate x squared, we get 2x and then multiply by e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. Okay, this is for the f sub x. Now, to solve for f sub x, x, we need to differentiate again the fx respect to x. But here, we have actually not only one term, but two term. 2x and e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. So, we need to apply the product rule. So, we have u and v. So, what is the formula for product rule? It will be v u prime plus u v prime. Okay, so v u prime. So, v is e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. And then, u prime. So, you differentiate the 2x respect to x. You get 2. Alright, and copy back first. And then, what is u? u is 2x. And then, partial derivative respect to x of e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. <coughs> so, differentiate 2x. We get 2. Differentiate e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed respect to x. We get 2x of e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. The same as this one. Right? We are differentiating the same thing. Okay, now we can simplify. So usually, because we have a common factor, we can factorize out the common factor, which is here we have e and then we have 2. So factorize 2 e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. And then what's left inside the bracket is 1 plus 2x squared. So set, that's for the f sub xx. So... For this one, we also can solve for the f sub x, y. Because we have f sub x already. So now we just have to differentiate respect to y. Right? So differentiate respect to y, this 2x is just a constant. So we copy back. Just the constant. And then this e, we have y here. So we have to differentiate respect to y. So differentiating the exponent. We differentiate the part y only. So, we have to differentiate negative 3y cubed, which is equal to negative 9y squared. And then, copy back the exponent, which is e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. So, what is the final answer? Simplify everything. Lah. Because this is only, we don't have any additional or subtraction between terms. Lah. So, we will, it will be negative 18x squared, xy squared, e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. Okay, so let's move on for the next, another two, f sub y, y and f sub y, x. So, for f sub y, 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 we need to differentiate respect to y. So, just differentiate negative 3y cubed, we get negative 9y squared e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. To get f y y, f sub y y, we have to apply the product rule again. Okay, because we have multiplication between polynomial and exponent. So, it's v u prime. So, v is e to the power of x square plus minus 3y cubed multiplied by u prime. So, differentiate negative 9y square, we get negative 18. Or, uh, let's discuss that later. Just continue with the formula. And then u is negative 9y squared multiplied by partial derivative of e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed respect to y. Now differentiate this thing. We get negative 18y. And then differentiate e to the power of x squared minus 3y squared. 3y cubed, we get negative 9y squared multiplied by negative 9y squared. This is for the derivative. Huh? This Multiply by e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. So, to simplify, we can factorize out the common factor e. And then, 9, 9, and then y, y. So, what do we get? We get negative, sorry, just ignore the negative. So, we, take, we can take out 9y 
e to the power of x square minus 3y cube and in bracket what's left is equal to negative 2 plus with 9y cube. Okay. So now we can continue with the mixed second order partial derivative which is f sub y x. So we have to differentiate respect to x. So this negative 9y squared is just a constant. What we need to differentiate is e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. So copy back negative 9y squared and then differentiate e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. So we need to differentiate respect to x of the x squared only. So we get 2x multiplied by e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. So simplify everything, we will get the same answer as f sub xy which is equal to negative 18xy squared e to the power of x squared minus 3y cubed. Okay? <clears throat> and then, the last example 10. Determine the f, x, f sub xx, f sub yy, f sub xy and f sub yx if f, sub, f of xy equal to natural law of x minus 2y. So, how to differentiate natural log first? So, we have the formula, the rule of differentiating ln of fx. It will be equal to 1 over fx multiplied with the d derivative. Okay? So, to find the f sub x first, we need to differentiate ln of x minus 2y. So, this is our fx uh, in the formula of differentiation rule. So we get 1 over x minus 2y multiplied by the derivative of x minus 2y. So differentiate partial differentiation of respect to x. So we get 1. So multiply by 1. So that's why the answer is only 1 over x minus 2y. But to differentiate again respect to x, we need to bring it as a power of negative 1. So, if we have the power of negative 1 for the second order the partial differentiation, we need to apply the power general power rule. So, the power will be negative 1 will be the coefficient in front of it and then copy back everything inside the bracket and the power will be subtract by 1. And then you have to partial differentiate everything inside the bracket which is equal to x minus 2y. So, just differentiate the x only. So, differentiate x we get 1. So that's why the answer is negative 1 over x minus 2y all square. So we can continue f sub x y. f sub x y first. Okay, so differentiate the f sub x respect to y. So the same as f sub x x, we need to apply the general power rule. So negative 1 multiplied by x minus 2y to power of negative 2. But now we have to differentiate everything inside the bracket respect to y. So we need to differentiate negative 2y. So the answer will be negative multiplied by negative 2. So that's why we can write down the final answer as this negative can be cancelled out. So we have 2 over x minus 2y or square. Okay? And then for f sub y. So, f sub y differentiate the natural log, we get 1 over fx, which is 1 over x minus 2y, multiply with partial derivative of x minus 2y respect to y. So, we need to differentiate the negative 2y. So, we get negative 2 over x minus 2y. And then, to differentiate respect to y again, we need to bring this x minus 2y as the power negative 1. And then, we now can apply the general power rule again because this, this negative 2 is just a constant. So applying the general power rule for f sub y y, we get negative 2 multiplied by negative 1 which is equal to 2 and then x minus 2 y and then power of negative 1 minus 1 which is equal to negative 2. And don't forget to differentiate everything inside the bracket with respect to y. So we need to differentiate negative 2 y which is equal to negative 2. Okay, so we have the final answer is equal to negative 4 over x minus 2y all square. And then the last one, f sub y x. 
So the same thing as f sub y y, we need to bring the power to the front, applying the general power rule. So it will be 2, and then multiply by x minus 2 y to the power of negative 2. But now we need to differentiate respect to x. So differentiate respect to x, we need to differentiate x only lah. Because negative 2 y is a constant. So we get equal to multiply by 1. So suppose multiply by 1 here. So the final answer is equal to 2 over x minus 2 y of of 2. Okay? So that's for the first order partial differentiation and the second order. Okay, so it a bit uh, trickier but it's really simple because we can just assume other than the variable that we want to differentiate as a constant. That's all. So please take a look at the tutorial question and try to do on your own. We will discuss the tutorial, tutorial 1 and 2 together on Tuesday. Okay, so we cannot drag on because we will need to replace our class on Saturday, 5 Saturdays. So please make sure you follow the schedule. Okay, so that's all for this lecture. Thank you class.